able yes. and be in the presence of our God. Yes. Well, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good day. My name is Alan Gray, and I have the distinct honor and privilege of being the pastor of iChurch DMV, a local congregation with a global impact. And it is sunrise service. Yes, sir. It is resurrection morning. This is the day that we're death thought it had gained the ultimate victory, mm. it actually was met with the greatest of defeats. Yeah. And if you are under the sound of my voice, rather live, or you are watching this at a later time, I'm here to tell you that you are victorious. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No, that, that didn't get the kind yeah. of response that I thought it ought to. Yeah. I, I, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to announce that if you are under the sound of my voice, it is 2024 resurrection morning, and no matter what you may have faced, no matter what you are facing, you have the victory. Right. That, that death is yes. already defeated. The sting thereof has been removed, and it's just a matter of walking out the rest of your life knowing that God has already got your back. Well, it is now time for us to dive into the word of God. We have had a wonderful time here in worship, both in person and online uh, with our Zoom Room family. Um, and now we're streaming live. So if you are on the platform, please do us a kind favor. The chat feature is your friend. We want to hear from you. Our team is there in order to kind of exchange back and forth with you. But most importantly, it is now time to dive into the word of God. If you have your Bibles, do me the kind favor and turn with me to John chapter number 11. John chapter number 11. We're going to be in verses 38 through 44. John chapter number 11, verses 38 through 44. And as always, I like to start with dad jokes. It's Resurrection Sunday, so my dad jer j jokes are resurrection focused. Mm -hmm. Well, they're Easter focused. I don't know if they're resurrection focused. Mm -hmm. So here's the first one: How many eggs can you fit in an empty basket? How many eggs can you fit in an empty basket? Now. Because I have in-person people, so you don't think that I'm in here by myself, I'm just going to go ahead and just see if anybody's got an answer here in the room. Normally, it's just me giving you time to think about it, but I just want to hear, how many eggs can you fit in an empty basket? All of them? Anybody else? As many as you can expect. That's cute. <laughs> Here's the answer to how many eggs you can fit in an empty basket. Only one. After that, it's not empty anymore. <laughs> Here's the second one. Here's the second. How how does an Easter chicken bake a cake? How does an Easter chick bake a cake? How does an Easter chick bake a cake? <laughs> From scratch. <laughs> Come on, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Lift them up in the air. Lift them up in the air. Come on, listen. These are dad jokes. If you were expecting something else, come on. Lift them up in the air. Repeat these words after me. This is my Bible, the Word of God. Today, the Word of God will transform me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Now turn with me to John chapter number 11, starting at verse 38, and the word of God reads this way. Then Jesus, deeply moved once again, came to the tomb. Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. 
But I say this on account of the people standing around me, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Unbind him and let him go. Mary, many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, had seen what he had did, and they believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. For the next couple of moments, I just want to tag this pericope, these couple of verses with this one word, it's a word we've used over the last three weeks, enough, enough. Will you join me in prayer? Eternal God, our Father, how we love you and thank you. We ask even now that you open up our hearts, our minds and our spirits, that they might be a proper reflection of who you are, both for ourselves and for those who may look at us. Save someone today heal, deliver, set a captive free as a result of the power that was won through your resurrection today. Thank you for what it is you've done, what you're doing, and we bless you for what you are yet to do. But this is our prayer in Jesus' name. And all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. As I mentioned, for the last couple of weeks, we've been making a case for the resurrection, the event of all events. This resurrection of Christ would come to define and would ultimately redefine the parameters of life itself. The resurrection of Jesus Christ forces us to look at our lives not through the lens of decades, but now through the view of eternity. Christian, we no longer are left to ask the question, how does this move or that one, this action or that one affect me now? But what we are allowed to do is to think about the ramifications and the reverberations of things that we do and how we do them against the backdrop of eternity. And although the resurrection of Jesus Christ changed it all, it was the resurrection of a man named Lazarus that communicated it. Lazarus's resurrection explained the problem, the purpose, and the power of the resurrection. The problem the resurrection addresses is a man's stubbornness that leads to death. Our stubbornness due to our pursuits, oftentimes, of personal independence. Martha proved that having enough reaching your limit is the natural outgrowth of doing things your own way. And only when we have died to self, to who we believe that we are and who we have promoted to others that we are, is it then that we recognize that we've had enough and we can live according to the will of God. But not only does the resurrection address mankind's issues that lead to death, it reveals the purpose of death. Mary, Martha's sister, did not have enough. She couldn't get enough. She, she did not have enough within herself to move. Mary connected with Jesus by offering to God her capacity. See, death reveals that she was completely dependent on Jesus. Because of that, she couldn't go any further if he did not move on her case. Mm. Today, this resurrection morning, Greg, we come to make the case for the power 
of the resurrection. Yeah. Martha and Mary have had and could not get enough. But there's one more person, Rick, in the story. There's one more person that's worth highlighting and acknowledging. Lazarus was proof enough. Mm. Lazarus was all the proof that Jesus needed to prove who he was. Yeah. From the beginning, Jesus had Calvary in his view. And contrary, Julie, to popular opinion, death did not have Jesus's number. Jesus was coming for death. Amen. See, when Adam fell in the Garden of Eden and all of mankind with him, it was already decided that God would redeem man through the Son of Man, oh. that Jesus would come, that he would take the sting out of death, not remove death, but take the power out of death. Oh. Only then would we be able to see that the only way that God could do what it is that he would do was to come and be one of us. Yeah. That, that, that he could not fix it from afar, he had to become familiar. Yeah. He became one of us, and in becoming one of us, he had to know us and in our stubborn independence and then be moved by us in our sincere dependence and then reverse what had happened to us by taking the power of sin through the sacrifice himself for us. Mom Lazarus was proof enough. Okay. If you still have your Bibles open, the text says in verse 53, so from that day on, they made plans right. to put him to death. Yeah. Question, what do you do when death tries to prove it's enough? Okay. What, what do you do when death tries to tell you that it's enough? I, 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 I've got two observations that I want to drop, and then I'm going to let you go to your brunch. The powers that be have assigned death to Jesus. So Jesus proves that he actually has all authority. Yeah. Jesus uses the resurrection to reverse the power of death. Now, Lazarus was enough to prove who Jesus was because up until that point, people thought that death had the power to have the last word. And in our text, when Jesus sees that we can't get enough because death is seen as enough, that becomes enough to trouble Jesus' spirit. Mm. I'll say it again for the kids in the back because some of you all are still just waking up. In our text, we see Jesus sees, when he sees we can't get enough because death is seen as enough, that becomes enough to trouble his spirit. Now, I, I got to follow parenthetically because you've been with us for the last couple of weeks. There's been a couple of statements in this text that are troubling. And one of them, for me, where I have to be honest, is when it says that Jesus is troubled in his spirit. Yeah. Pause for a second. Mm -hmm. What would trouble Jesus' spirit? Hey. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on the other side. Whatever troubles Jesus. But what we see through the progression of these characters, by the time we get to Lazarus, what troubled his spirit was the fact that all of the players, both primary and secondary, believed that death had the final say. Martha thought that death had had the final say. Mary thought that death had had the final say. And when Jesus saw their reaction, he was troubled. Not their reaction, but the fact that they believed that death had more power than he had. Than he had. That became enough to trouble 
his spirit. Hebrews 4 and 15 says this, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. Therefore, Jesus sympathized with what he puts on display in our text. And then he gives us even more when we look at John 10 and 10, for his power is made perfect through this problem. In John 10 and 10, you all know that thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life more abundantly. And when you look at these two passages of scripture in tension, you see why Jesus' the spirit was troubled because he, he told you in advance of this moment that, 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 that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, to do all manner of things in order to say that he's enough. But did you not hear what I have come to do? Do you not know who I, I have come that you might have? How could death be enough if you know who I am? How could you be threatened and to believe that death has the final say if I haven't said anything yet? So in order to receive the power of the resurrection so that death is not seen as enough, you and I, I got two things for you. The first thing is we must make preparation. I'll say it again. In order to see the power of the resurrection so that death is not seen as enough, the first thing that I would just challenge you to consider is to make preparation. Yeah. Verse 38 of our text, John 11 says this, then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Oh, good God from Zion. <laughs> oh boy, I've been waiting on y'all to get here. I played technician. I, I did Florence's job this morning so that Florence could be in worship today, just so that I could get here to tell y'all this. You and I must make preparation if we're going to walk in the power of the resurrection. <laughs> Jesus has authority over life and death but you and i have to choose life mm, yes mm, choose life we cannot say that we want to see god reverse what death has done that 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 the power of the resurrection is possible if we're not willing to make preparation for life mm -hmm. I'm not frozen. I'm pausing so you can think about that. <laughs> see, see, many of us allow our lives to tell us our limits. Yeah. Not frozen again. But with Jesus, he has the authority over life and death. And He's challenging us to align with him in life. Question. What is limiting you? What has told you that this is as far as you can go? Where has something promoted death? Jesus proves his authority over the power of death by first calling out what we have placed as a barrier to seeing him as he is. Mm. Hebrews 11 and 6 says this, without faith, it's impossible, underscore, impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. There's that word from earlier today. He rewards those. He adds to those who seek him. You've got to make preparation. So many of us want his promises. We want his power. But have you made any preparation? How are you engaging for what it is that you're asking for? Because he's going to do it, but he's going to do it in proper proportion to what you prepared. There's a lot of peace in that. 
The stone in our text is a barrier that is not only keeping our faith from moving freely, it signals that it is a place where we don't want God to go. He told them, remove the stone. Because as long as the stone is there, you can't see the resurrection. As long as there's a barrier there that is allowed to exist, then it's keeping your faith from moving beyond it. What do you need to remove in order to have the life that death is trying to take? If we're going to draw near to God, if we are going to step to him and cry for him, then we need to be prepared for him to make clear to us that the barrier between our request and our reward, we're willing to move. It's our job to remove the barriers in our life once Jesus calls them out. Okay. I didn't freeze again. Let, let me say it again. It's our job to remove the barriers once Jesus calls them out. See, Jesus does not remove the stone because he's the rock. And you and I must choose to remove it. Every miracle requires some participation on some level. The blind beggar who received his sight prepared for it by first calling out to Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, this is one of the reasons why we go through praise and worship here at iChurch DMV. It is not just in an effort to have some kind of form or fashion or religious exercise. It is to start to prepare you for the work that will be required on your part for what Jesus is going to call out to do his part. Yeah. See, because if, if you can't lift your hands when given an opportunity, if you can't raise your voice when asked, then, 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 yeah. then, then, if you can't do what you can do when you can do it, why are you asking him to do what you can't do? When the centurion whose servant was healed, the centurion prepared for it by first coming in search of Jesus. The woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years prepared for it by saying to herself, if I but touch the hem of his garment. All of the miracles have some form of personal participation in advance. Mm -hmm. Woe be unto the church who looks for miracles without first moving barriers. Wow. Yeah, you, 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 we will not be a mature church if you need God to move first. He called it out. He showed you. He told you. And yes, it might seem and feel like an impossible feat, but you at least got to put your hand to it to see if you could move it. Yeah. And in order to receive the power of the resurrection, you and I must remove whatever is preventing us from reaching Jesus as the Christ, as he has made himself clear to us. You don't need to believe him in the way that somebody else believes him. You just need to believe how he's revealed himself to you. Amen. You don't need my faith to move your mountain. You don't need your mama or your grandmama's faith to move that obstacle. You just need the faith you can muster up. Yes. Lord yes. have mercy. <laughs> I don't know who that one's for. You just need faith that you can handle and he will handle the rest. He said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain to move. <laughs> we must choose to make him the rock on which we stand. Is this helping anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus calls out the stone, and until we remove the stone, the rock cannot reverse what death has done. 
Ooh, this is preaching better than y'all are responding. I hope online y'all are doing a little bit of a jig wherever you might find yourself because I feel like running, but I'm so contained by all these wires. I'm afraid I might disconnect something if I move too much. Let, let me say it again. Jesus calls out the stone, and until we move the stone, the rock cannot reverse what death has done. Mm -hmm. Martha, however, had some pushback. Martha reminds me of Peter. Martha always gets something. But I love that about her because that's some of us. Martha had a pushback. Look at verse 39. You still got John 11 open? Verse 39 says this. The sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor for he has been dead for four days. Now here's the thing. She wasn't lying. Her pushback was valid and true. And, and let me just say, this is one of the reasons why Martha's name is in scripture and many of ours wouldn't make it. Because we think it, we just wouldn't say it. But her name is there because she actually said it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish some of y'all just open your mouth. Some of y'all think y'all saved through your silence, but some of y'all just need to open your mouth. It, it don't have to be right. Just, just start talking, and God will make it right after a while. Well, oh, God, I feel there's God, there's, there's something in that. See, some of you all are, are thinking your way clear, and it doesn't work like that. You have to talk your way clear. You got to let your thoughts disentangle themselves through your mouth because life and life and death is in the power of your tongue and everything that has been created, God spoke. And I would rather say the wrong thing and let him reverse it than have all of these crazy disconcerned, disconnected thoughts bounce around in my head and I'm just letting anything produce itself. She at least opened her mouth and what she said wasn't a lie. Yeah. When making preparation, there will be moments when the situation will give you cause to push back. But know that you've already been prepared. I'm not frozen again. See, let me just Say, say this, Frank. This wasn't part of my notes, but I think it's important to kind of underscore here. God is so much God that he didn't start being God when you recognize you need God. Hello. Hello. <laughs> say that. Hello. Say that. Hello. He knew you were going to have this problem before the foundation of the world, so he did not wait to prepare you once you realized you had a problem. Amen. Now, that might be when you started to articulate it, mm -hmm. but you aren't informing him when you start talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't new sin. He has already prepared you for it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said to her, did I not tell you? If you believe you would see the glory of God, what Jesus has said is enough to reveal the glory of God and to remove all the barriers if you believe. Mm. Mm -hmm. What is in front of you, the barrier that exists between where you are and where God desires to take you, you already have the word for. Amen. Lord. I'm sorry if I have to keep repeating some of these things, but it's just good to me. And sometimes repetition is still the mother of all learning. What is in front of you, the barrier that exists between where you are and where God wants to take you, you already have the word for. You don't need a new word. You just need to activate your faith around the word he has already said to you. Didn't I tell you that if you would just believe you would see the glory of God. Mm -hmm. The Lord never allows the enemy to be the first person to tell you about something that God's going to deliver you from. Mm -hmm. He will tell you about a problem, but the Lord is already giving you a word for the problem. You just did not realize the purpose of the word because you didn't have a problem to apply the word to. Mm -hmm. Help us. Right there. 
This is why, this is why, beloved, I, I, I challenge everybody to show up every week because you never know what never word know. you will receive never know. that you're going to need. Never. See, see, sometimes you can come here and it's like, oh, that was good. I, I don't have a place for it. Hold on. Right. A problem's coming. But the problem that is coming, you've already been prepared for. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you hear the words that just came out of my mouth? See, see, it is not God if God waits until you have a problem to supply the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He gives you the answer yeah. Yeah. before you have the problem. Yeah. It takes faith to receive an answer that you don't have a problem for. Right. Yeah. But just to do what Mary did when she was told by Gabriel, mm -hmm. oh woman who's highly favored. Mm -hmm. And she pondered mm -hmm. that in her heart because she didn't know what to do with it. Because she had never been with a man before. What does, what does this mean? All right, well, I'm just going to hold this here. And as the old folks used to say, you'll understand it better by and by. Beloved, can I just say something to you that the preparation that is required in order to see the power of the resurrection is our requirement, which means you have to be in position to receive the word in advance of the worry. Mm. See, our God is not reactionary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's preparatory. Mm -hmm. He's preemptive. Mm -hmm. He's so powerful that he trusts that you can hold on to a word until you need it. Amen. Many people just come looking for a word that they need. Mm -hmm. You already late. Mm -hmm. Which generally means you're going to use it wrong. <laughs> he does. All right, let's go on. I feel like I've pushed that point enough. You don't need a new word. You just need to activate your faith around the words you've already heard. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I said that was that was it, but I do need to kind of put this in here. This is why taking notes is important. This is why going back and listening to it again. Well, what was said there? This is why takeaways are critical because your takeaway helps to inform where you're going to put that later. Which takes us to our second and our final observation. When Jesus speaks, he always has an audience with God the Father. Therefore, the words of Christ bridge time into eternity. His words go from death to life, for they are life. John 6, 63 says this, it is the spirit who gives life and the flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit, Amen. and they are life. Amen. Woo! Good God from Zion. There are no idle words of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. For every word of Christ is designed to take us from death to life. For they are spirit, and they are life. Amen. Amen. When making preparation, we are then, here's the second thing, included into the conversation. Yeah. We make preparation, Jesus then includes us into the conversation. In verse 31, chapter 11, John's gospel account is this. So they took a little stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard the power of the resurrection is in Jesus' words. See, it's natural to believe death when it shows up. Natural. Martha did. She thought that because Lazarus had been dead for four days, that removing the stone would reveal not only defeat, but also decay. But the power of the word of Christ not only stops death, it reverses it. That's what the resurrection 
is all about. It's the reinstitution of life. I gotta, I gotta stop, I gotta stop, I gotta stop, I gotta stop. Because see, some of us want the power of the resurrection without first having the problem of death. See, so you can't get to eternal things until you reach the limit of temporal ones. Yeah. And there is just some things that this world cannot put their minds around until what their minds are around have done. God wants to do it exceedingly yeah. abundantly above all you can ask or think. The only thing we can get beyond what we can think is if we think that we die. Lord, have I talk to you today. In Job 25, the, the scriptures, I will receive to you the years that the swarm of locusts have eaten. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah 61 and 7 says this Instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore, in the land they shall possess a double portion. They shall have everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love justice, and I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give to them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. When we remove the stone, we make room for the rock. Hallelujah. All right. We, we get included into Jesus's conversation. Notice the text in verse 41. So he took away the stone and she lifted up his eyes and said, Father, we're making preparation. Jesus starts a conversation about us to God. Our Father. I need to say it again because I need to let that resonate. When making preparation, Jesus starts a conversation about us to God our Father. Yeah. See, we play a part in implant part. See, we want him to be a part before we play the part. And that's backwards. You don't get him to move until he sees you move. When he sees you making preparation, when he sees you showing up, when he sees you coming before you need him, then there's no hesitation when you need him for him to come. Uh. Jesus. See, see, death thought that it had the final say. So much so that they had rolled a stone up on Lazarus. But Jesus came to the tomb that housed death's victory and said, remove the stone. And because they took him at his word, he started talking to God the Father about what death had said enough to. Mm -hmm. Death's power is only enough until life starts talking about us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John 14 and 6 says this, I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Death has power. Yeah. However, because we have made preparation, Jesus has had a conversation with God our Father about us, and once death has had enough and said enough, Jesus has the authority to say, Lazarus, come out. Mm. Okay. Today, the power of the resurrection is to be included in Christ's conversation. Mm. The power of the resurrection is to be included in Christ's coming. Is Jesus talking about you? 
When Jesus says to you, is he interceding on your behalf? Is Jesus talking about you? Yeah. Jesus has come to the place where it looks like death at one, where you have been up and your strength has been out. And he is talking about you. He starts to serve off by being challenged to think about those places of stress and strain, spurtful, literal crossroads. The reason why that is so critically important is because challenge is common. No matter our state or our nation, we all are challenged at some point. So that becomes the crossroad of humanity that Christ meets us. But stop by here on this Resurrection Sunday to ask you, how do you act your challenge? Do you believe that your challenge has the final say? Have you put up a barrier for the potential of your faith because of the problem that you face? Do you believe that what you are dealing with is enough mm-hmm. that that will be the death of God's plan for you? Mm-hmm. How we handle the hell we go through is proportional to the preparation we did before we got there. Jesus wants to meet you right there where it died. Mm, right there. Right there. And where it says that it's a, he's about to give you a resurrection to prove that he's more mm-hmm. than enough. If you would simply take him at his word, Jesus has the authority to reverse the power of death. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we love you. Thank you. We ask even now that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to not only hear what we've heard, but to receive it. And in our receiving it, put it to work. Allow you to do what only you have the authority to do. Death is real. It comes in many forms and threatens all of us. But your word is more real. So wherever death has had its say, we turn our ears to what we have heard you say. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Thank you, Lord, for having me on your mind. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your word, which is spirit and it is life. Thank you that you have the power to pull us out of the grave and have life anew. For it's in the name of Jesus and all of God's children who believe it and receive it. Praise God as you say, amen. Amen. Come on, put something on it and bless his holy name. Glory to your name. If you're online, put in the chat, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Prepare yourself moving forward. And if you are currently in the pit, I need you to know that God has already spoken the word you need to navigate this moment. Amen. He's already given you a word to handle where you are. Now, 
depending upon what kind of a steward we were in the past, we might need a little work in order to get re-engaged with that word. But I need you to know the word is already there. So if you would sit with God, remember how we said earlier, in that seeking being still with God, that stillness has a purpose. Because before we get up and start activating into our day, it could be in his presence we are reminded. Our minds are renewed. The, 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 the desire of the Lord is to restore us. It's not by accident that part of the new covenant are a lot of words that start with re. Mm -hmm. The Lord desires to have us have flashbacks and deja vu moments, if you will, because he wants us to know that he was working in advance mm -hmm. of whatever we're getting ready to go into. And here's my encouragement to us as faithful followers of God through Christ. Make sure that going forward, you don't take preparation for granted. I don't think that there's much of an argument that could be made that we live in a time that, as the old folks used to say, are filled with swift transitions. No sooner do you settle on this than that happen. And it's happening at the speed of life. So our problems are not decreasing. And just because you're saved, you don't become problem immune. So what do we do as followers of Christ in this time? It is we prepare. I'm not preparing for the problem. I'm preparing for my relationship with God so God can fix my problem. And in preparation for the relationship I have with God, my father, I have to know that he often will give me a word for my future. Right. Yeah. So he's preemptively preparing me for whatever is coming. And according to the way we prepare ourselves, that means Jesus starts talking to us because it is impossible to please God without faith. And faith is the substance of the things that you hope for, whose evidence is not seen. So don't be surprised when you come and you get word and you don't know what to do with it. You can't see where this word goes. Good. Because in a minute, if you hold on to that hopeful word, when what happens happens, ah, that's what that word was for. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you're not taking the enemy's threat. Mm -hmm. You were just waiting for the enemy to catch up with God's promise. Yeah. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, Lord. I am the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. I am well supplied. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's nothing missing and nothing broken. Yeah. I have been anointed to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, mm -hmm. to speak liberty to captives. All of that stuff happens in advance. I hear those instructions in advance. And then guess what? I, 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 I get folks that are locked up telling me their problems, people that are sick, issues. Does that make sense? May we not be shocked. May we take the shock or the sting out of death. It's supposed to come. The threats are supposed to happen. But he happened first. And he doesn't have some power. He has all power. And if he can defeat death, there's nothing that's going to happen in this week that you're not going to be worthy. Amen. All right, beloved, we are just about out of here. But as always, we would be remiss if we did not give you an opportunity for two things. The first being accepting this amazing gift that was won for us through the power of the resurrection. Today, you don't know Jesus for the burning of your sin. 
then in essence, you don't have access to the power that we've been talking about for the last couple of months. And that power is to be able to move beyond what time and the temple things of life limit us to. Jesus came, as John 10.10 10 says that I mentioned before, to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And that's not just in time, that's for all of eternity. But you've got to make preparation for that. And the way you prepare for that is by accepting that gift in advance of needing it. <laughs> right? You, you, you have to be like one of the thieves on the cross. You've got to say, Jesus, I trust you before you need it. Yes. And all you got to do is just make a request for some prayer. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. I'm separated from you by deeds that I inherited and deeds that I've done. Yes. And I ask that you forgive me of those sins and I accept Jesus' gift through the sacrifice of his life. And I ask you in my heart and to leave my life. If you have made that request, if you have prayed that prayer, then you in the your destination, destiny has changed. And through the power of Jesus and pleading the blood, like we said earlier, he's going to start walking you through situations and scenarios. He's not going to prevent them. Problems come to us all. But he's going to give you the power to overcome them in a manner that brings glory to him and will work out for you. All things work together mm -hmm. through his leading as a result of our gift through that love exchange. If that's you and you've done that for the first time, we want to hear from you. You can email us at ichurchdmv.com or hello at ichurchdmv.com and we will share with you some of the things that will be helpful in order to take you through the first stages of your journey. Here's the second thing that we do before we close on out, and that is to give you an opportunity to sow. If this is a blessing to you, then I'm going to challenge you to help us be present in the future. There are multiple ways for you to give. You can go to our website and see it there. Because we're streaming live, uh, and my team is on normal. Uh, I will put in the giving slide after broadcast. So you don't have that 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 they are available to you, but you can go to our website and you can see exactly how to do that. But I'm going to challenge you that if you haven't given to this ministry, it's a great opportunity for you to do so. Every seat matters. Your matter in order to make this ministry possible. I just add that if it's a blessing to you, do so to it. We thank you for it, Dan. I actually want to pray over it. Father, we thank you for the gift. Of these givers. May they be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on the earth. Give us wisdom and discernment for how to best use it and multiply it back into the life of the giver and multiply it when it hits our hands for the stewardship of this ministry. But this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, time. that's it. That's all for this week. As always, uh, we want to get the opportunity to do takeaways, and we're going to do that um, in our Zoom room. We're going to come off live, and we're going to do it here um, in our in-person uh, sanctuary. And we're also, too, um, and this is for my Zoom room family, we're going to do communion right quick, too, because it's Resurrection Sunday. So grab something wherever you are. Our team here is already going to be prepared for it. But we're going to do communion because it is Resurrection Sunday. A great opportunity to do it. Um, with that being said, to all of our streaming family, we thank you for joining us today. Have an amazing Resurrection Sunday. Walk in the power of knowing that Jesus is enough. Blessings. Love you the Lord. Boom room. Type. Be right back. All right. Can we put Zoom can we and can we put them up and then slide over there? Thank you. How are we doing? Y'all going?
Yes. Mercy. So they, they need some iron in this room. They need I everybody got all wrapped up. Hi family. I'm gonna move slightly to the side. Um the community, can you get that to me, please? All right, I'm gonna turn the sheets out. No. Whoa. Um, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning to the Furbish family and Greg and Josh and Ward and Julie and Donnie. Blessings to you all. Um, I did see Sharon as well. Um, let's keep sharing as we get ready for um, takeaways. Would love to hear what you heard. Um, and as we also prepare for communion, uh, please keep sharing your prayers. She wasn't feeling well. She was planning on being with us in person, um, but she's having some medical concerns. So we want to lift her up um, today. Um, takeaways, as we prepare ourselves for communion, I'll ask the elders to, to make sure that we distribute that. Um, okay, I'm coming to you. I see you. Um, but uh, online, yeah, that's the question. Online, if you have a takeaway, I do not know if. Okay, I just, I'm sorry, I saw Sharon. I was like, well, where is she? But that's from earlier. I'm looking at the timestamp. Um, if you have a takeaway and you're online, I don't know if we're going to be able to hear you. Eight o'clock? So, where's she at? Eight o'clock. She's right here. Oh, okay. It's blurred. Okay. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. All right. Um, if you have a takeaway, please feel free to put it in the chat feature, uh, because again, I don't know that we've got the, the tech set up in a manner that we'd be able to hear you, and I apologize for that, um, but we'll definitely make sure that we read it out loud. Um, but in the room, Julie, take away. I saw your hand. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's been useful my whole life as a person who every time I learn something new, within three days, somebody comes along who needs the information. That I had, and that has been my life career, um, and, and even leading up to this moment of diagnosis and what have you, I see the preparation, the things that I've been taught to do uh, for myself, and I really believe that it has mitigated symptoms and, and how well that I have done, um, and so I'm grateful to God for that. Um, uh, just a, a heads up, Tuesday. I go back for another PET scan. Uh, I complete, completed one round of chemo, and they said that the, the, that was for the spot on the liver. So the prayer is that that one last light has been turned out awesome. uh, and turned off. Awesome. And so Tuesday, go for the PET scan to see yeah, if, if not, then they'll do something called an ablation, which they will burn that bad boy out. So we can leave it on its own, or we about to. Go hand or get the big. Um, the second thing that that stood out for me with the stone was so many times we're afraid to roll away the stone for fear of what will come out, and we're expecting all the ugly to show up and all of that uh, to come out. And what Christ brought out when you were brave enough to roll away the stone, He brought out life. When everybody else was expecting death and ugliness and all of the things that you bury, you know, you bury it thinking that as long as it's buried, it can't hurt me. But when you allow Christ to cooperate with Christ and be brave enough whew, to roll away that stone and take the risk of what you think is ugly and smelly and death and bad to come out. Because truth makes you free. So exposing truth and saying, I feel afraid. I feel these different things. And, you know, one day I was fine. The next day I'm told, man, and, and, and in that moment, I'm sad because I'm like, I haven't done enough. I haven't said enough. I haven't done enough of what you told me to do. And I'm so sorry because now my mortality is looking me square dead in the face. And, and I'm regretful and sad over, not even fearful, 
Because I understand, you know, my eternal life isn't based on what I do, but I felt like I had not shown enough gratitude for what I had been given. And and I fear that was what's in that tomb that had the stone. My stone was covering up my fear. It was covering up a sense of not enough. And a sense of not, you know, being an also ran in the race instead of a winner of the race. And I'm just grateful that in this moment that that forced that stone out the way and, and makes you face those things that you would rather bury because out of it, the truth, your feeling is a fact, but it's not necessarily the truth because the truth is you let Christ move that stone out the way. What he brings out of all of your darkness is light. So if you guys could just think about something that death has stolen from you. Death steals more than the thing that dies. It has the potential to steal away what can still yet live. Mm. Lazarus lived again. Mm -hmm. He died. It's true that it, certain things came to an end. But that wasn't the end. And when we do put our hand to what Jesus calls out, when we do acknowledge and agree to engage with what Jesus is asking for, it does reveal the limitations that we place on ourselves and our faith. Yeah. To what Julie said, what the text says, that, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid of what's going to come out of this. But if God be for you, if God be with you, I mean, they, they roll the stone away. This dead man comes out. But Jesus was right there the whole time. If he's with you, you can face anything. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we're more focused on what may come out than who we're with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Re remember that seeking Sunday school lesson? That his chief desire is to be with us? More than he appreciates the work that we do for him? He's like, look, I just want to be with you because if I'm with you, nothing can harm you. Mm -hmm. Not their threats or your past. And I'll be right there. But he was right there with Mary. I could, I could see, I, I can see him holding their hands. As they remove the stone. And they're questioning what's going to come out of it. And Jesus is like, I got you. It's okay. We can do this. We tell kids all the time. You can do hard things. Don't avoid it. Just hold on to his hands. God's unchanging hand. And he'll walk you through the valley. He, he, he's, he gave you a word in advance, right? How many of us learned the 23rd Psalm before you knew what a problem was? So in that, in that word to all of us, he told us, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art He gave us everything we needed. If you don't remember any other word, you, you have one. You really do. Every word is spirit and it's life. Yeah. Even if you can't really figure. No, I promise you, go through your rope. This little light of mine, that's not a scripture, but he said, I am the light of the world. So when things get dark, you can sing that song. Yeah. All right, we got to get out of here. And he said, uh, church was amazing. Thank you, sir. Um, and a, a little line that stuck out to me was mustard seed can move mountains. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't need the strength to move mountain, you just need a seed of faith. Just hold. Mm. 
And we've all seen that happen. We've all gotten out by the skin of our chin, chin, chin. Why? Because when that car was coming at us and all we did, Jesus, see, plead the blood, plead the blood. I have time to put a full prayer in. I just had a name to call. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 All right. Anybody else with a takeaway? Takeaway. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we allow our lives to tell us our limits. Mm -hmm. And you ask, what is limits mean? Yeah. What is limits mean? Um, so that was powerful. And then in you also said, um, receive the word in advance of the word. Mm -hmm. Receive the word in advance of the worry. Challenges are going to meet us all, but the word is there to fight for you in advance. Praise God. Thank you. Rick, yes, sir. Oh, this is hit me when you said it. And I'm going to say it again for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's um, believe how he revealed himself to you. Yeah. I got thinking about that. I'm not going to give you examples, but I was thinking, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, yes, sir. And we need to take time and think think about. We often through this happenstance, well, I got lucky or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, that was the work of God, and you have to take that and on, on that. I can't do laundry. I can own online. I can use yours to the nice, but when I bring it home, bring it home, it's it's freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for for adding to my belief level. Yeah, you praise will. God. Praise God. Yeah, there many of us attempt to retain somebody else's faith. We, we we heard their stories and and hearing other people's stories are important, but you have one. You really do, and that's again one of the reasons why we do these takeaways. Not just so that you can hear other people's stories, but so that you can hear other people's stories and think about your own. Because I promise you, your Jesus is enough. Hmm. Many of you all remember in the book of Acts, the seven sons of Siva. Um, and it says that, you know, they were casting out demons. Um, and when they went to go cast out demons, they said, in the name of who um, Paul preaches, I cast you out. You know, they, what they were doing was an honorable religious duty that needed to be done in the lives of people. They were bound people. And these young men, you know, got into the fray. The problem is they got into the fray using somebody else's testimony. They decided that they were going to engage in, in spiritual matters and things that were greater than temporal um, powers using someone else's testimony. And the fact of the matter is when they went to go do it, it worked enough for them to get in the fight. <laughs> they called the bully but had no hands <laughs> right they were feeling froggy and they leaped and couldn't swim and lo and behold those demons many of you all know said Paul I know and Jesus I know but who are you and they got their hind parts beat because it wasn't the heart, it was the head. Mm -hmm. They came in midway. They had no preparation. They didn't talk about their own testimony. They didn't think about their own. The Jesus you know is enough for your fight. Mm -hmm. So we've deconstructed our services over the years because I'm just at this stage of my life in ministry. I'm more concerned about, well, do you know how to fight or are you going to keep calling me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
because I got news for you. I got my own demons to fight. And even though I sit in this position, I'm a, I'm a aid you, but I'm tired of fighting for you. That's I'll fight with you. But you're not going to throw me in a ring for something you're not swinging on. <laughs> See, because I used to be that one, yeah, we, we all go, mm -mm. stop picking a fight that you can't fight in. And that's what happens with a lot of not brother. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> because that would be that old school. All right, I'm gonna whoop the bully, but then I'm gonna whoop you for getting me in it in the first what, what were you doing? <laughs> you and me at this stage, nah. Let me teach you how to fight. And then if it becomes too much, one can send a fight a thousand, two, ten thousand, we'll do it that way. But nah, you gotta have something in you. Amen. All right. Anybody else with takeaways? David brought down Goliath. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Board said uh, David brought down Goliath. Amen. Indeed, he did. All right. So we'll go Linda then Frank. My takeaway is okay. Frank then Linda. <laughs> One of them. One of y'all go. When when making preparations, you should start the conversation. God about that. Yeah. Yep. When making preparation, Jesus starts the conversation. Mm -hmm. See, because we, we all we all acknowledge that Jesus has been. Where is Jesus right now according to the scripture? At the right hand of God, doing what? Intercession. Making intercession on our behalf. In other words, He's talking to God the Father about us. Mm -hmm. What's He talking about? Are we giving him something to talk about? Right? Mm -hmm. He's not just talking about you if you're not doing something that requires him to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You with me? But if you're in a position, now please don't think this, to, this doesn't reverse what I just said, but if you're in a position that requires his assistance, like you, you went and you removed the stone, Great. Now he knows you can't handle that. Now he's coming in. Right? So he comes and engages where faith is required. But he wants to know, are you willing to trust that he's got your back? So he, that's what intercession is. He's coming to your aid about the things that are faithful. Amen? That's what he's doing. Yes, ma'am. The other part of that was because that was about preparation, but it also don't take preparation for anything. Here you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Frank, you still can? Yeah. The, my understanding is when the stone was removed, there were people that was running away to tell other people mm -hmm. what was done. The non-believers were like, that couldn't happen. But when something died, there's a new beginning. Mm -hmm. And this beginning is bigger than the, the, the thing that actually died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, so what I love about that, and, and, and Frank, you touched on something that I'm praying about he may be the next place that he goes in ministry. Um, since y'all are here, I'll go ahead and tell you anything. Um, <laughs> that, that particular line, the way that this text ends, with those snitches, you know, because it says that some, many who were there believed, but some went and told the Pharisees and the high priest, which started the whole conversation about, oh, yeah, no, nah, we got to get rid of this one, right? Because there's always going to be some in the crowd that are with you, and then there are going to be others that are with you along only so they can go tell someone else. Mm -hmm in effort to undermine you. So a message that's ruminating in my spirit is um, uh, religious nationalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's making me really kind of giddy because you know there's, there's no question that we've kind of gotten into a place where it's difficult to distinguish between following Jesus and preserving national religious ideologies. 
I'm very giddy about it. So if the Lord give me the release, it goes to, to that point. How do we get to a place where Christian nationalism is a thing? <clears throat> it comes around death and how you handle death. I ain't going to start today, Frank, <laughs> but I promise you, death is a part of life. Death is a part of life, and we need not fear it if we have the author of life with us. Amen? So I'm going to leave that right there for there for right now. Anybody else want to take away? And look, did, can you scroll? Are we at the end of that? I just want to make sure I didn't leave anybody. Okay. All right, cool. Awesome. All right, so now we're going to do communion, um, and then we're going to be released to your brunch. Amen? So at home, if you have something that you can take, um, a grape of some, sort, of some sort, if possible, if not, some water, and we're going to be it's gonna be one. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. About to start the music. Hallelujah. So, communion, as we call it, the Holy Eucharist, as it's also called, the Last Supper, as it is additionally called, was instituted on this weekend. It went from Passover to communion on what is called Monday, Thursday, on the night that he was betrayed. And even though this technically was done on Thursday, today is Sunday, because we weren't together on Thursday, and this was emblematic of what we celebrate today, I just thought that it would be fitting since we were together that we would share this moment. Because Jesus, when he instituted it, said, as often as you do this, you bring about my resurrection. That's the part of life, but for the believer, that is not the final say, the resurrection. So wherever death occurs, wherever death threatens, know for us there's one step after There will be something that ends for the believer. That's the sign that something's about to begin. We need not fear. We need, thank you. We need not, need not be concerned or, or, or be frightful when death shows. Might, might I challenge you to start getting a little excited? Because if the Lord has allowed death to come, it is because he desires that something new begins. So for us, we do not live as those without a hope. For our hope is built on Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Amen? Amen? So on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he held it up. He said that this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. So break it. That snap. Mm. Was his commitment. I'll take the weight of it. Mm. It's got to happen. I'll make a hit. We take and eat. They did that. And after they had eaten, Took the cup. And he lifted it up and said, This is the blood of the new covenant. We do not live as those without a hope. But the cup symbolizes that the old covenant has been replaced with the new. This is where all those rewords come from. That there's something else after this, and the promises of the new covenant is that life 
is in the blood. And where our blood was not sufficient, his blood still works. And we do as they did. And you say amen? It is. And so shall it be. Father, we thank you for the privilege. You didn't come down. But you decided to die in order to save us. So now, Lord God, since you have carried your cross, may we live in light of that sacrifice. And when we find crossroad experiences, may we be seen standing on the rock of your word until you reveal the resurrection of our life, my book life. We thank you for the healing that is awesome. We pray for sharing. We pray for continued healing for Julie. And we pray for continued healing for my grandfather and anybody else who needs a touch from you. We ask right now that you touch them. If it's not physical healing, then mental, relational, emotional, financial, situational. God, let death do what death needs to do. And if you give it permission to do its work, then we stand at the ready to watch you resurrect life anew from it. And we stand in that peace because you are more than enough. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, amen. Hallelujah. Have an amazing resurrection Sunday, family. Love you to life.